Video games are weird, right? They're weird things made by a bunch of weirdos and played by even weirder dodos. They're hard to define. Ask 10 people what a painting is, they're gonna give you a pretty similar description. Same thing with a song, a TV show, a movie. With video games, there certainly are genres, but you ask 10 people to describe what it is, they're gonna give you 10 very different answers. Part of the amorphousness of the medium is because they're literally the most difficult art form to produce, given that they're an amalgam of literally every single other art form. Visual art, music, animation, writing, acting, cinematography, choreography, and you gotta do a bunch of coding. Do you know how difficult coding is? Anything more complicated than Hello World will find any excuse not to work. Oh look, it's still messed up because I typed in Hello Rawled. You see what I mean? It's the code's fault. Oh, and also, unlike all other art, it has to be interactive. You have to do your best to provide some sort of satisfying experience to thousands if not millions of unique brains that all work differently. And over 99% of them are group projects. Remember doing group projects in school and being like, wow, my group sucks ass. I'll just do the whole thing myself. Or have you ever worked a food service job and been like, wow, it's 2 a.m. and we have a line out the door of drunk people from the bar across the street. But the rest of my team is smoking a blunt in the bathroom. So I guess I'll prep the food and run register and cook the meat and wrap the fucking pitas and clean up. We all had this experience, right? Well, in video games, that's not really an option. No one person is good at everything. Even solo developed games and largely solo developed games have to make some concessions somewhere. For example, Undertale, great game. And while there's a lot of charm behind the enemy designs, these aren't exactly cutting edge graphics, you know? Game design is hard and takes a long time. Once you have the skills, you can do a horny torty painting or make a hit song in like a month or less. Games take years. And of course, time is money. Games are incredibly expensive, and it's all upfront costs. With other businesses, you can make some early sales to sustain continuing your business. In games, with the exception of early access releases, which has its own set of challenges, you don't make any money off the game until the game is done, or mostly done, and you start selling it. If you have a team of 10 people, much smaller than most teams, making 50 grand each, a very modest salary for this field, for two years, that's a million dollars, not including other fees like workstations, overhead, licensing, legal, publishing, marketing, taxes, benefits like PTO and health insurance to attract talented people to work on said game. Where's that money gonna come from? You got that kind of money? I ain't got that kind of money. Unless you know people wanna hit the join button below and become a channel member. Most people ain't got that kind of money or enough saved resources to go without a paycheck for months if not years and get paid after the game is done. Well, you can maybe work with an investor like a publisher, some of whom will fund you and provide helpful resources like localization support and playtesting, but they're gonna take a big chunk out of your profits. It might tell you to add or change a bunch of stuff to make it more marketable. Like with any large project, the more stakeholders you have giving inputs, the more exponentially challenging it's gonna be to balance all of that stuff. But even then, video games are a very monolithic industry. Unless you're either working at a major studio, or working with a pre-established IP, or your game goes viral for good reasons, something that is 99% outside of your control, it's extremely difficult to sell a game. Most games are financial failures. While not everyone makes a game to make a fuck ton of money, I don't think anyone would spend thousands of hours of their life making a public facing product just for no one to see it. And part of the difficulty of selling is because games are a relatively expensive hobby and they're long. A long ass movie is three hours. A short ass game is five hours. Your time is a much more valuable resource than your money, and people are hesitant to invest both time and money into something they've never heard of. So they're often going to stick with old reliable. Plus, if you want to learn how to make video games, there's no real accredited education or official certification like other industries have where you become officially qualified to make video games. For example, if you study engineering, no matter where you go, you're going to have classes on these topics. You take exams to become officially certified to approve bridges and stuff. Same thing with other fields like education, medicine. You want to become a lawyer, three years of law school, take the bar, take the bar again, you're officially a lawyer. With games, some colleges might have individual electives on it, but there's no comparable full degree program for video games as there are for most other fields. If you want to work in games, you could major in components like computer science or graphic design, and for the few colleges specifically designed for it, by the time you finish a two or four year degree, technology
technology moves so fast, programs you would have been doing assignments with would have been updated or replaced, or the studio you want to work at doesn't use the program you learned, plus there are just so many different ways to make a video game, so what's the point? For a lot of it, you have to rely on online tutorials by random people and just hope they know what they're talking about. And it's a very competitive field. If you're lucky enough to secure a spot at a major studio, chances are you'll be at a place that will destroy your soul. The games industry is one of the most needlessly horrendous industries to work for. It'd be one thing if it was like, yeah, I'm a doctor in the ER, I save dying people. It's understandably pretty stressful. I'm an air traffic controller, I have to make sure planes don't collide in midair. It's pretty stressful. But then there's, I make video games and it's quadruple suplexing my mental health. This is due to greedy bosses, unqualified managers who failed upwards into their position, and flat out human rights violations. Currently, there's little to no unionization, studios suddenly closing, little industry-wide oversight, coerced crunch and crunch culture, toxic workplace culture, various forms of harassment and abuse. The end product could be the goodest, most innovative game of all time, it could reach through the screen and give me sloppy toppy and stick its finger up my ass, and it still would not be worth the developers being abused. No art is worth the abuse of others. All tour theory is American Pharaoh level grade A horse shit. And while many of these big budget games do nudge the envelope of what games can be, given that they're large investments, they tend to play it safe, which often leads to the most milk toast, repetitive, greatest common denominator type of games, devoid of the inner creativity that's latent within all the people actually making the game. And what if you want to make a different type of game than you usually do? You might be able to only secure funding to make the same shit over and over again your whole life. Because capitalism demands that art continue until it ruins its own reputation and is no longer profitable. Any and all creativity must be drained by the syringe of corporate greed. Mass media can no longer simply exist in the past. Every intellectual property must be milked dry until only a husk of its former self remains, whereafter it is callously discarded to make room for the next one. And then the game comes out and you have to deal with reception from gamers. Most of whom are great, but many of the loudest voices can be just the worst. For every one person saying it's a masterpiece, you'll have 10 people saying it's fucking garbage, nine of whom have never even played it. When you're making something out of nothing, you can do 99 things right, but if you do the hundredth thing in a way that may make sense in your design and makes sense in playtesting, people will proclaim that it makes the whole game a failure. Reviews by people who say it's too hard, reviews by people who say it's too easy, reviews from people who claim they know better but don't have either the means or the drive or frankly the talent to make their own creative products so they instead spend their time lambasting yours. And online games have hackers and scammers you have to deal with, hate groups may try to use your game to recruit members. In summary, shit is straight fucked bro. It's an absolute miracle that any game gets made at all. Bugs and glitches are like fucking whack-a-mole. You fix one and that causes 10 more to pop up. You may see a broken game and think, what a bunch of fuck ups behind that. Why didn't they just press the make game good button? I see a broken game and think, wow, it's even amazing that they made it this far. It's usually not the individual developer's fault, it's usually some stupid BS that happened instead. Now is that end product worth your money? Hey, I didn't say all that, that's a question only you can answer. But considering everything I've said, I can only come to the conclusion that you'd have to be a big fucking dumbass to even consider making a video game. Which is why I'm glad that there are so many big fucking dumbasses in the world, because video games are amazing. Like I said before, you can't define what video games even are. Are they a thing where you're a little guy in a little world? Well, no, because what about games where you're not playing as a dude? Okay, you control some type of creature? Well, what about puzzle games like Tetris? You're not alive at all, just a bunch of blocks. The only definition you can come up with is in the vaguest of terms. They're a digital entertainment feedback system where you use some type of input device and make things happen on a screen. They're so not formulaic. This is the medium's strength. Its interactive nature gives it limitless potential. The one thing they all games have in common, the one thing that makes them stand above all other art forms is that they all deliver on one thing. Power fantasy. And I don't just mean being a powerful dude and wearing dope armor and killing a bunch of dudes. I mean, they do deliver on that. They absolutely do. I mean, the escapism into another reality. God, I sound like I'm in 1998, son, virtual boys. It's about experiencing things that we wouldn't be able to otherwise experience in the real world, more so compared to other art forms. Even in movies, you might see some cool shit, but you're a passive observer. In video games, you're not just seeing it, you're doing it. You 
are it. Even if it's like a simulator game, you still have increased resources than the real world, and you're free from consequences, giving you room to experiment. You don't have to train your whole life and have perfect genetics to become a pro athlete. You don't have to go to flight school to become a pilot. You don't have to worry about failing as a city planner. You have infinite attempts. This escape is what makes video games the highest form of entertainment, at least in my mind. Obviously, I'm biased. Doing things that no other art form lets you immerse yourself into, like exploring some fantasy world, being able to kill a bunch of dudes, becoming a car driver, Driver, being a professional athlete or coach, becoming a mostly ethical lawyer, creating and running a city, jumping really high, saving a princess, teaming up with your friends to go on an adventure, casting spells, feeling loved, fighting a bunch of zombies, swinging a sword, being a medieval tactician, romantic interest texting you back, cowboy, yeehaw, infinite chances to retry if you fail, feeling like you can make a difference in society for the better, soccer and cars, owning a house, dating not feeling like a complete waste of time, walking over your friends, having multiple lives, killing God with the power of friendship, being a hero, being a villain, being Batman. Sure, some of these things are technically possible in real life, but would cost way too many resources to realistically achieve, and that is the magic of video games. I don't really know what point I'm trying to prove, so I'm just gonna end it here. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe, comment below with what you like about video games, and uh, that's it, the video's over.